GFCI outlet or GFCI breaker. Now it's easy to assume that both of these are pretty much the same thing. However, that assumption could cost you additional money that you don't need to spend and maybe even cost you some peace of mind along the way. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the differences between these two and when you should choose one over the other. The two most common forms of GFCI protection come in a receptacle format and also a breaker format. Now, I did call this a receptacle. I know earlier I called it an outlet. And the reason I th did that is because these are typically referred to as outlets by a lot of people, but the electrician term, the official term of these are receptacles. So just know I'm gonna refer to these as receptacles going forward. Also, this breaker here is not a GFCI breaker. This is a standard breaker. Um, I don't have a GFCI breaker available for me to demonstrate, but the difference between this and a GFCI breaker is that with the GFCI, it's gonna have an additional wire that's coming off of the breaker. It's gonna have a coil to it, and this wire that's attached to it is going to hook into the neutral bus bar inside of the electrical panel. It allows the breaker to have connections to both the hot and the neutral side, and it'll work just the same way as one of these receptacles does. It's going to monitor the amount of current flowing between the hot and the neutral side, and if it detects any kind of an imbalance, just like with this one, this is going to shut off power to the entire circuit. While that all seems pretty straightforward, when it comes to real world applications, things aren't always as simple as it seems. So for example, if you need to protect multiple receptacles on a single circuit, you might think that your option is to go with a GFCI breaker. And while that may be the case, just know that you can also protect multiple receptacles with a single GFCI receptacle, as long as the other receptacles are wired to this in a specific way. There's also some confusion around whether or not you have to have GFCI receptacles in place in areas like kitchens and bathrooms, even if that circuit is protected by a GFCI breaker. Before we go any further with this video, I also wanna make sure it's clear that I recommend consulting a licensed electrician when determining what solutions you need for your home electrical needs. A licensed electrician will be able to guide you and help recommend solutions that are relevant to you and your specific use case, as well as help make sure that all electrical codes are being followed. If you're a homeowner that's looking to add GFCI protection to an existing receptacle or to multiple receptacles, the thing you're probably gonna to wanna to stick with is just a simple GFCI receptacle. So no matter if you want to include GFCI protection just for this one specific point in your house, or if you wanna add GFCI protection to this receptacle location as well as others, then this is probably gonna be your best bet. Not only is this going to be considered generally a safer practice than say replacing a breaker in your house, that this is also going to allow you the flexibility to to protect multiple receptacles in a specific area of your home. In order to do that, then you have to follow two basic things. One is the power that comes into the receptacle from your electrical panel needs to be connected to the line terminals on the back of your receptacle. And anything else that you want this GFCI receptacle to protect that's downstream, you'll need to make sure that those wires are connected to the load terminals. If you have both of those things in place, no matter if it's a receptacle or even a light, then it should be protected by a single GFCI receptacle. Now, if you wanna make sure everything's protected through GFCI on a circuit, then your best bet is to use a GFCI breaker. But again, this is not something that a typical homeowner should be doing when it comes to their home electrical work. And I should also point out that GFCI protection is required by code as well. So it's not like you can just skip having GFCI protection in your house, which is sometimes a comment that I receive on occasion from people wondering if they have to have GFCI protection or if they can just skip it. GFCI devices have been instrumental in decreasing electrocutions associated with consumer products from over 800 annually in the 1970s to fewer than 200 annually in the 1990s. So clearly these devices are working and they are saving lives. The biggest argument I have against GFCI protection in general is that it's just more expensive than installing a typical standard outlet or a standard breaker. And while that is the case, imagine the cost of not having this protection in place and someone that you love or you know gets seriously hurt or worse. If we put all that aside, we know that GFCIs are a requirement. We also understand that breakers and receptacles generally do the same thing, but depending on who you are, you might wanna choose one or the other. So now let's talk about the differences specifically between GFCI breakers and GFCI outlets or receptacles and understand when it's best to choose which type of device. First, let's talk about the obvious question. All things considered, since GFCI breakers cover an entire circuit, wouldn't it be best to just install GFCI breakers everywhere in your house? And the answer to that is no. One of the main reasons for this is because GFCI breakers cost significantly more than a standard breaker and even standard GFCI receptacles. So if you're just trying to protect a small area, like say a bathroom, for example, then you can do that by just simply using a GFCI receptacle, whereas a GFCI breaker would be overkill. 
And with GFCI breakers, if one device trips the protection, then everything else on that circuit is going to lose power. So if you have something like an appliance plugged into the circuit and something else somewhere else in the house trips on that same circuit, then that appliance that doesn't really need the power cut is also going to lose power, which can be a little bit annoying. Also in some older homes, they might not be able to leverage GFCI breakers because the electrical panel might simply be too old and you aren't able to wire in a GFCI breaker in order to protect the entire circuit. I know that happened to us because we used to live in a house that was built in the 1960s. And in order for us to replace a breaker with a GFCI breaker, we were going to have to replace the entire electrical panel, which wasn't an option for us because it wasn't in the budget. Another reason not to use GFCI breakers everywhere is because it's going to make it harder to figure out what device tripped the protection for the GFCI. So when it comes to troubleshooting and isolating an issue, anytime you add additional protection in the mix, it's going to make that job a little bit harder. Another thing you might be wondering is whether or not you still need to have GFCI receptacles in a bathroom if that entire circuit is protected by a GFCI breaker. And the answer to that is no, at least as far as I know, it's no. And what I mean by that is you always have to make sure that the electrical codes in your area are being followed. But in general, you do not have to have a standalone GFCI receptacle installed in a wet area that requires GFCI protection like a bathroom or outside or in a kitchen if that circuit is protected by some kind of GFCI protection like a GFCI breaker. You might also wonder if having GFCI protection at the receptacle versus all the way back at the electrical panel is going to provide a faster level of reaction time, faster level of security and safety. However, that's simply not the case. There may be a very, very slight variation between a receptacle that's in an area that's protected versus a breaker. However, we're talking like milliseconds here. So in either case, you're still going to be protected by the GFCI circuitry. And yes, if you really want to, you can have a GFCI receptacle installed on a circuit that's protected by a GFCI breaker. However, that's probably going to make things a little bit more annoying. You might have an increased level of nuisance tripping and it might be a little bit harder for you to pinpoint where the exact issue is. There's one other thing that we haven't talked about at all in this video, which is AFCI protection. Now, AFCI protection is different than GFCI protection, but under the current NEC code requirements, you have to have both in place in your home in certain areas. So while GFCI protection protects against electrocution, AFCI protection protects against something called arc fault interrupts, which is basically the electricity inside of a device or inside of faulty wiring arcing through the air and potentially starting a fire. While GFCIs are required in wet locations like kitchens, bathrooms, and garages, AFCIs are required in pretty much every other location in your house per the current code requirements. That includes areas like bedrooms, living rooms, and even hallways. So with all these things in the mix, especially with AFCI now, as I throw that in towards the end, you can see that this topic can get a little bit complicated, a little bit confusing. So again, if you are confused by anything, it's always recommended to consult a licensed electrician to help you through this. Now, if you're wanting to learn more about what AFCI is, how it works, and whether or not you need it, then you should check out this other video next where I go over AFCI in depth. All right, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you found it helpful and I will see you in the next one.